Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a WIOA Wednesday webinar. My name is Amy Julian, and I'm the director for the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support at Illinois State University. We're here hosting you today for the 2020-2024 Unified State Plan Strategic Elements. A couple of items before we get started. All attendees are currently in listen-only mode, so if you have questions, please post those in the question pane, and then if you would like to speak, we will allow you to raise your hand and we can unmute you. All of our panelists are um, joining us today. We have our primary speaker is Cameron Sweetman, Sweetman from KEB. Doug Morton is with us, Janice Taylor Brown, Jennifer Foster, LaVon Nelson, Michael Baker, and Todd Lowry. So with that, I'm gonna hand the floor over to Cameron and get us started. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you all for attending today's uh, webinar on the strategic elements of the Unified State Plan uh, for your feedback. Uh, I'm Cameron Sweatman again with KEB. Uh, just some background, KEB, we help facilitate the Unified State Plan process, including the Unified State Plan work group um, and, and the subcommittee. A quick historical for everybody. So this is the second Unified State Plan that the state will submit under WIOA. Uh, the first plan was for the period of 2016 to 2020. So some of you are probably familiar with at least some aspects of the state planning process. So for some of the more experienced participants today, you may view aspects of the presentation as uh, more of a, of, a, of a refresher, especially um, at the beginning of the presentation. So this is a high level presentation of the strategic elements uh, that have been developed to date by the Unified State Plan Work Group. Today, we'll review what the Unified State Plan is as a refresher. We'll review what the strategic elements of the plan are to gain your feedback. And we'll take a, a look at what all composes the strategic elements of this Unified State Plan and how it aligns with other plans. Also, please note that uh, in the days following this presentation, you'll have an opportunity to provide feedback on, on these strategic elements. Or you can also wait for a public comment period that spans from January 2nd to January 31st of 2020. Uh, several state level and collaborative groups and individuals uh, are working to develop and update the state's plan. So the Unified State Plan Work Group and connected committees are made up of WIOA partners, including state agencies, Illinois Workforce Innovation Board members, and representatives of teams and task, task forces. Uh, as a reminder, uh, the work on the strategic elements uh, is nearly complete, but these are still only draft elements uh, that will continue to be informed by feedback and uh, new data and new information uh, as it becomes available and as it's uh, provided. Uh, this presentation, I should also mention, includes time for questions, which is important given this is a feedback webinar, uh, for all to provide perspectives on the strategic elements uh, to inform uh, new content. So again, that, for that quick refresher, the Unified State Plan, it outlines the four-year strategy uh, for the state's workforce development system. So it's submitted by the governor of each state to the Department of Labor, the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, this plan is developed with input from federal workforce programs, business and industry, economic development, constituent population, advocates, and other interested stakeholders, which is why webinars like this one today are, are so important. I should also note uh, the Unified State Plans must be in place for states to receive funding for core programs. So what is the workforce development system exactly for purposes of this plan? So it's a national, national network of federal, state, regional, and local agencies and organizations that provide a array of, an array of employment, uh, education, training, and related services and supports to help those job seekers in Illinois um, so Illinois businesses and workers can successfully you know, compete in the state national global economy. So essentially the strategic elements of the plan, they drive the visions and, and goals of the state's workforce development system, alignment strategies to support economic growth. So as it says on the slide there, strategic elements there are part of the plan that include analyses of the state's economic conditions, workforce characteristics, and workforce development activities. So now just for an overview of the federal requirements. So states are required to submit plans to USDOL and the US Department of Education every four years, as well as two-year modifications. 
Federal guidance dictates uh, the format of unified state plan and mandates specific content. This ensures that all of the state plans are in a consistent format. We've already touched a little bit on what the strategic elements are, but there are also operational elements as well. We're not going to cover those today in depth, but I want to go over them briefly, because together with the strategic elements, they compose the bulk of the unified state plan. Operational elements are being developed now. Uh, this section of the plan will identify the state's efforts to support the strategic vision and goals identified in the strategic elements of the plan. Essentially, this section ensures that the state has the necessary infrastructure, policies, and activities to meet its strategic goals, implement strategy, and support program development and coordination. And also there at that, that uh, third uh, bullet there, uh, program specific plans that are required to be submitted from WIOA's four core required partners are currently being developed as well. The four core partners are there listed on uh, that slide. Uh, Title IB, uh, Wagner Pizer Act Program, Adult Education and Family Literacy, and Vocational Rehabilitation Title IV as well. So careful attention has been paid to aligning the Unified State Plan with the IWIP Strategic Plan, uh, Executive Order 3 from the Governor, and other agency-specific plans, such as Perkins 5, uh, outside of the Unified State Plan. Uh, I should also note that the Commerce Agency Plan has been released for all those that are involved in that plans process, um, and perhaps now or maybe later in the, in the presentation, someone from uh, the Department of Commerce at the state level might want to add um, a little more uh, information on that. So now let's go ahead and dive into the strategic elements. So an economic analysis inclusive of these three areas you see on your screen are part of the planning requirements uh, for the strategic elements. So much of this content was created by the interagency data team, and the data team consists of data experts from across state agencies, including Department of Commerce, Illinois Community College Board, Illinois State Board of Education, uh, IDES labor market information, economists, and other labor market experts, so a range of uh, entities. The economic analysis content uh, retains two foundational elements that are important to keep in mind. A business demand driven approach and ensuring the strategic elements are truly data informed. So a business demand driven approach essentially asks what sectors, industries, and occupations are most important in the Illinois economy. And in regard to being data informed, the strategic elements contain a robust analysis of relevant labor market data. Key elements of this labor market data might be a number of workers, a number of establishments, vacancies, average wages, projected changes in workers and establishments, and current location quotients. And by location quotient, we mean a concentration of an industry in a given region. So overall, economic production, employment, and earnings are three of the most important economic benchmarks used by Illinois to understand our economic position and to, to evaluate the effectiveness of our efforts to improve the position. So as you can see on your screen, GDP growth has picked up since the Great Recession over a decade ago, but is lagging behind the, the region and the U.S., and earnings in the nation have surpassed the Great Lakes region which includes Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Wisconsin. So this is providing the backdrop uh, for this, the setting for continuing the implementation of WIOA. The challenge is for Illinois to utilize all of the partner programs to assist the business community to increase those three benchmarks indicators I just mentioned, productivity, employment, and, and earnings. So the Governor's Executive Order 3 report states, uh, by focusing resources on specific clusters, the state can more effectively focus on a competitive advantage in emerging industries. Leading companies in a high growth industry clusters act as a magnet for talent, related businesses, robust infrastructure, and innovation. Investing in the foundations of a dynamic economy, such as a well-trained workforce, a favorable regulatory environment, and a coordinated plan can help the state attract companies to specific clusters. So 
so all saying all that leads us to what is also included in strategic elements, and this is an in-depth sector industry analysis. So a special priority sectors methodology, which we might be able to get into later, categories industry sectors into three main categories. Leading industries, emerging, and maturing. Leading industries are those that will likely provide the largest number of job openings due to their combination of size and growth. Emerging industries are those that are currently small but are quickly gaining in economic importance and job creation. And maturing industries are those which have slower job growth but still have a hefty presence in the economy and will continue to create significant job openings. But what are these leading, emerging, and maturing industries in Illinois? So here you see a graphic of Illinois' industry sectors. So in the upper right-hand quadrant, these are the six bubbles on the rightmost part of the bubble chart that you see. Uh, they show the leading industries. The lower right-hand quadrant shows those emerging in industries I just mentioned, and the upper left-hand quadrant shows uh, maturing industries. And I should mention also that bubble size that you see here, that equates to the size of the industry. So if you can see those numbers there, they might be a little bit hard to read, but a value of one indicates the industry at that equilibrium with statewide employment. Values greater than one indicate the industry has a comparative advantage versus other sectors in Illinois. And values less than one indicate the industry has a comparative disadvantage versus other sectors in Illinois. So as you can see, that's, the slide says that uh, professional and business services, leisure and hospitality and healthcare sectors uh, expect the largest number of job openings. Also construction, transportation and housing and wholesale trade. And you can see those on the, the right side of the X axis there on that graphic. So the, the plan, the strategic elements also display and explain several maps that describe the relative importance of various industry sectors in Illinois in comparison to the nation and the relative importance of those sectors across Illinois' 10 economic development regions. As a refresher, an economic development region is a, is a planning region essentially aligning workforce development activities and resources with larger regional economic development areas. So these are determined based on geography, business and industry, workforce demographics, labor force, and community pattern. So an effective workforce system must ensure a pool of appropriately skilled workers is available when and where businesses need them. Addressing this, the workforce system in Illinois has been proactive in seeking input from business leaders with a variety of approaches. So this section of, this, of the strategic elements, employers' employment needs, highlights specific listening sessions, surveys, regional events, and direct business engagement with frontline staff. So I'll provide some examples. So in October 2018, a statewide summit called Work, Learn, Grow was held with private sector leaders from manufacturing, healthcare, information technology, transportation, distribution and logistics, and financial services and leaders in education and workforce development to highlight successes and explore options for expanding the use of work-based learning. Another example would be how the state worked with Technology and Manufacturing Association and Society of Human Resources Management to host listening sessions with manufacturing and healthcare leaders. And finally, also researchers affiliated with a work group focused on integrated integrating business services spoke with uh, and surveyed Illinois businesses across sectors and across states in order to better understand what employers are seeking from the workforce development system and how Illinois can better connect employers to that system. So business leaders across all sectors and industries continue to emphasize the critical importance of essential employability skills as well. Because many business leaders contend workers must have strong employability skills alongside strong technical skills. Illinois workforce system is adapting to this through helping ensure educators, students, and workforce center service staff and program participants know the importance that employers are placing on these employability skills. 
So Illinois is currently utilizing other initiatives as well to support the workforce and education system uh, to address these employer needs throughout the state. A couple of examples would be state framework for in, uh, integrated business services, and this laid out prerequisites, foundational elements, and structural components for a regional approach to integrating business service functions. And then also the integrated career and academic placement system, also called ICAPS. And essentially through a partnership between Title II and uh, post-secondary Perkins CTE, this is a basic skills and training model was developed called the Integrated Career and Academic Placement System, or ICAPS, which includes stackable and industry-recognized credentials. So I'll just give one more example. So uh, just to give another example of how the workforce has to evolve with the job market. So yes, there are more automated components to jobs available in today's workforce, but employers are still seeking people to maintain or oversee the automation employed in business. And there is a, currently a, a dearth of employees across the nation who can fulfill this function in the U.S. So this just shows how we in Illinois have to be ready for new demands on employees. And as the demand involves, the workforce has to adapt so we can fill these positions. So I know I went through uh, a decent amount of information and examples there. So we'll go ahead and take a minute or two to uh, look through any questions in the chat pod. Uh, to provide answers from the state level partner staff uh, and data team members that are on the webinar today. Again, if you would like to place your questions in the question pane or chat box, we'll be happy to address those. At this time, Cameron, there are no questions. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead and move on in the presentation then. And I Wait, will give her I'm the sorry, address. Andrew, we do have, sorry. Okay. Cameron, we do have one. The question is, is the LQ for the state of Illinois as compared to the US? I believe so, but I believe um, a member of our data team might be better served to, to answer that question. And who would like to, who would you recommend? Um, perhaps uh, Mike Baker or Ron Payne on the call? Yeah, uh, the, the um, can you, can everybody hear me? Hello? Yes, we I can hear you. So. Okay, yeah. Um, basically, yes, the location quotients are basically the uh, the industry composition in your area compared to the national uh, industry composition as well, and if we're uh, anything above a 1.0, means that your area has a higher concentration of a particular industry than the nation does as a whole. That's exactly right. So to clarify, the chart you saw in this presentation is statewide. There are similar charts in all of the regional data packets for those of you that are on regional planning teams that have that industry breakout and how your region compares to the nation. Correct. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Are, Thank you, Robert. There are no additional questions at this time, and panelists, please mute yourselves, and we'll continue with the presentation. Thank you, Amy. So, um, we discussed the economic analysis portion of the strategic elements, but there is also a workforce uh, analysis portion. So Illinois has to provide education training to meet demands of businesses, but also has to a, a, be adept at adjusting priorities and service strategies to anticipate medium and long-term labor market trends. So for example, by 2020, on average, 65% of all jobs are going to require post-secondary education. However, Illinois is above the national trend with 70% of all jobs requiring post-secondary education. Also, Four distinct generations with different views, expectations, and priorities now occupy the same workspace from boomers to, to Gen Z. To respond, companies will have to adopt new methods for just about everything, from recruitment and benefits to training and advancement, which means workforce development must also adopt new methods. Another example would be that nearly half of millennial workers would consider leaving a job that didn't offer learning opportunities and 34% of all job seekers 
are energized by the idea of finding career with career development opportunities. So this is just another, another example of a new reality we have to adapt to uh, in the workforce in Illinois. So continuing this workforce analysis portion, uh, occupational skill requirements are increasing across the workforce due to a number of factors, including the, the increasing pace of technological change and the increasingly global nature of the economy. Technology-fueled economic forces such as automation, AI, and deep data analytics continue to supplant human muscle and increasingly human intelligence. So workers will have to apply critical thinking and continuously improve and adapt skills to stay on top of the technological advances surrounding them in the workplace. When you add to this the increasing desire and need for talent mobility, both geographically and occupationally, and the pressures upon a state like Illinois to educate, train, and fully employ its workforce is more critical than ever. So an example of another trend would be that over a third of hiring managers predict their employees will work predominantly remotely in the next 10 years, which is something else for the Illinois labor force and workforce system uh, to adapt to in response to mobility. Also of note, between 2008 and 2018, employment shifts occurred among U.S. industry sectors, featuring a reduction in goods producing industries, maybe like agricultural production, in favor of service producing industries, like educational and, and health services and professional and business services sectors saw an increase in that 10 year span of 2008 to 2018. So also a, a part of this element of the strategic elements are skill gaps. So according to Governor Pritzker's Executive Order 3, skill gaps may be the most serious barriers to economic stability and prosperity. So to ensure our workforce's skills are meeting employer demands, BOA core program partners are asserting and supporting workforce development activities and strategies. These include identifying high-impact region clusters and in-demand jobs associated with them, implementing coordinated workforce development strategies, strengthening workforce development across the state, increasing apprenticeship opportunities, establishing equity goals, and uh, among other things, addressing barriers to employment, which is very critical. So the strategic elements go on to assert and explain strengths and weaknesses of the state workforce system as well. An example of a strength uh, would be possibly the WIOA State Summit which is a gathering of over 500 WIOA program leaders and staff to share best practices and lessons learned on implementation issues. While an area of improvement might concern how some data is not able to be aligned across core partners due to statutory regulation. So those are just a couple examples of uh, strengths and points of improvement. But Governor Pritzker, as mentioned, uh, recognizes the importance of addressing skill gaps as evidenced in Executive Order 3 and uh, which requires alignment across workforce related strategic plans as we talked about earlier in the presentation. So all three of the action areas that frame the administration's workforce development agenda, they recognize the importance of investing in, in skill development that supports, again, these regional cluster strategies and prepares Illinois workers for careers in high demand industries and shortens the time required to connect skilled workers with employment opportunities. And the Illinois Workforce Innovation Board also is using its strategic plan to focus on developing business profiles uh, throughout the state to understand specific workforce needs that are directly identified by employers. So further addressing the issue of skill gaps, so recently the Illinois Community College Board developed a survey for the community colleges to use to identify their strategies and activities in addressing the essential and occupational skill gaps. Results are being used to identify practices that are working across the state, find gaps, and work to develop solutions. Also addressing the skill gaps are the Perkins 5 Strategic Plan and the De uh, Department of Commerce Economic Development Plan. So the Perkins Plan focuses on priorities and strategies for career and technical education. D DCEO's Economic Development Plan focuses on three priorities, which include long-term economic growth, reducing the equity gap, and attracting more workers and businesses to Illinois. In all, several state entities are working in collaboration and through their unique plans to strategically address skill gap 
as evidenced in the Unified State Plan strategic elements. So now we're going to move on to the vision, principles, and goals as outlined in the strategic elements of the Unified State Plan. So you see there on your screen, the vision is to foster a statewide workforce development system that supports the needs of individuals and businesses to ensure Illinois has a skilled workforce to effectively compete in the global economy. So state leaders and the Illinois Workforce Innovation Board, they came together to update and approve the vision I just read and the goals as well. So some of the principles that accompany this vision are uh, include areas that we've already touched on today, such as demand-driven orientation, strong partnerships with businesses, uh, pathways to careers of today and tomorrow, cross-agency collaboration, and integrated service delivery, and so on. And then the three goals that were developed out of this for achieving the state strategic vision, as you can see, are uniting workforce development partners around regional cluster strategies, preparing Illinois workers for a career, not just their next job, and connecting job seekers with employers. And finally, I just want to finish up by going over the six state strategies. So listed here are the six essential state strategies that underpin Illinois' commitment to engage and support all parts of our education, workforce, and economic development systems. So I'll, I'll go through them briefly. Number one, coordinating demand-driven strategic planning at the state and regional levels. So the State Workforce Board has a demand-driven, as we've mentioned, strategic planning process grounded in partnerships across education, both secondary and post-secondary, workforce, and economic development at the state, regional, and local levels. Strategy, strategy two, supporting employee, employer-driven regional sector initiatives. <clears throat> Illinois has been actively engaged in sectoral work and sector strategies for over a decade. The Illinois Workforce Innovation Board, they continue to guide this work to ensure investment and resources and promotion of skills. Ex uh, strategy three, provide uh, economic advancement for all populations through career pathways. So state and regional sector initiatives, they provide the foundation for sector-based career pathway initiatives that expand career and educational opportunities for students and workers. Uh, strategy four, uh, expanding service integration. So for example, the Illinois Workforce Innovation Board, they adopted a service integration policy that established 15 goals for effectively planning and coordinating the many workforce development programs offered locally through WIOA. Uh, strategy five, promoting improved data-driven decision-making. So the interagency data team, which are on this webinar today, they provided a statewide analysis of current economic, labor market, and demographic trends. And this information is available to the public and workforce and education partners to assist businesses, job seekers, and students in making informed decisions. And then finally, strategy six, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> state level teams are expanding and improving the Illinois public-private data infrastructure to support uh, the other five strategies that I just mentioned. So these are the six state strategies that are the foundation of the supportive connections between the development systems. So with that, I can now, I'm gonna now go over the timeline of, of upcoming uh, events and activities. So here are some of the, the next steps in the Unified State Plan development and review process. So in order to ensure your comments or input into the state plan as soon as possible, if you all could submit your questions and or comments to the on the strategic elements by November 15th, that's two days from now, at, at noon, to the email shown, info at ownerworknet.com, that would be ideal for us. You can also wait to comment during the public comment period, though, that spans nearly the entire month of January. Also, a webinar covering the entirety of the Unified State Plan is forthcoming this January, um, and, we and we also have solidified the submission date for the Unified State Plan. It has been confirmed as uh, March 1st, uh, 2000, uh, 2020, so that same early spring uh, submission date is what's planned on. 
So with that, if there are uh, any questions um, for any of the core partner uh, state staff that are on, on the webinar or any uh, data team members or myself, uh, now would uh, be the time for, for that feedback, or you can also send it into that email address um, or also wait for the public comment period. There are no questions currently. Okay. I'll, I'll wait a minute or so um, before uh, officially uh, going ahead and uh, editing today's uh, webinar, just to give folks uh, another chance. Well, with that, I'm not seeing any more questions. So thank you all for joining the webinar today. It's really appreciated. And again, you can submit any feedback or comments or questions you have um, to that email. I'll go ahead and um, put it back up on the screen, info at IllinoisWorksNet.com. Um, and you can also wait for the public comment period in January. And we will be having another uh, webinar in January on the entirety of the Unified State Plan. Thank you. I do have a couple. Um questions and comments. Um, there's a question about the full draft of the PowerPoint. Yes, we will be sending that out as well as the recording from today. So you will have access to the PowerPoint. The strategic element full document is actually available in to download as a handout, but we'll send that as well as an attachment. And then we do have a question for our panel. Aside from the full draft, can we also oh, receive? Yes, sorry. Address both those. So with that, anything else, Cameron? Um, I don't have anything else. Else oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all for attending. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you much. <laughs>